Okay, who is the team? The team is the people that we're gathering for this amazing thing. So I'm recruiting, right, yeah. for the Steam camps, mm -hmm. and you know we we meet each other and uh, we try to organize. And for reference, like if somebody wants to see the videos, I'm I'm I work completely openly, uh, basically just transparency. So. I yeah. completely like put everything on a wiki so you can trace everything that I do. Mm. Uh, I think that's part of the good good practice for collaboration because if we do a, we're planning an incentive challenge next year where we're going to get like a thousand to five thousand people. I mean, major, major spike in our activity. Um, yeah. Have you heard of Hero X? No, I haven't. Hero X is a crowd incentive challenge platform, um, spin off of the, the X Prize, and we're going to put a challenge $250,000 to. And we're going to fundraise that. I uh, don't think we should have a problem. Uh, open source, 3D printed, professional grade, cordless drill made from scrap. So all the infrastructure required to do that, including business infrastructure. So that's part of the, the work we're doing. And the Steam Camps are actually related to that in that we're training the people that will participate in that. Because uh -huh. it's full open source tool chains. All out open yeah. source. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the goal. Uh, that's that's next year. That's that's a project. I kind of like to show that okay, you can actually make open hardware work in an efficient way where you're developing in a radically collaborative way. And yeah. nobody's really done that. Like on those incentive challenges, um, they all compete with each other. They're not uh -huh. collaborating. They're like okay, team, team, and it's like you're just dividing the effort by a factor of a thousand if you do that. You know, why not yeah. everybody contribute to the same thing? You can get get way way further. So that's. I mean, that to me is like a, this amazing, powerful idea, but no one's doing it. So there's such an opportunity and we aim to change the world with that. I mean, implement it. So, you know, uh, you said you mentioned you mentioned you, you, you know about us for some time. Yeah, I remember, uh, I don't remember when I first heard about the open source technology stuff, but uh, yeah. it, was, it was a while back. I feel like it was, uh, well, the way my business started, uh, back in 2012, I went to the Open Hardware Summit in New York, yeah. um, and just sort of ran with it from there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not finding my background in mechanical engineering. I just wasn't finding the kind of like intrinsic motivation and uh, the same sorts of things I was feeling about my work. I wasn't finding in my peers or coworkers at my day job, right? So um, open source hardware is where I really found that intrinsic motivation kind of being put into action mm -hmm. uh, yeah so i so i went to the hardware summit in 2012 and then sort of went on from there how would you rate your openness uh collaborative literacy or open source spirit from one to ten from one to ten what is ten ten is i'm all in i believe that this can change the world okay and then so and one is like i'll do it if it's convenient or i'll do fake open source yeah. Which is non-commercial. Yeah. Uh, gosh. Where would I rank? Certainly between 5 and 10. I would say probably around the 7 range. Uh-huh. Do you, do, are you aware of any gaps that you might be missing in terms of your subscription to open source culture, open source collaboration? Mm. I think the main barrier that I run into, and I'm sure you see this as well, so... Pretty much everything that I'm designing is a, a hardware good. Most of it doesn't have any electronics at all. Uh -huh. It's violins, it's shoes, it's um, home goods. You've done stuff. some shoes? Yeah, yeah. A lot 3D of my printed? Uh, the prototypes are 3D printed. The okay. shoes themselves, not as much. There is one thing I'm working on now that's a client project where we may use 3D printing for the, for the production method. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so all this stuff, like, in the realm of uh, these products, there isn't, nobody else is really doing much work in, in open, open source is just, like, so foreign, and yeah. people just associate open source hardware as computer hardware, right? Yeah. But, no, I mean, my argument, and I know yours as well, would be it's actually furniture, and, like... Of course. Uh, uh, anything. Anything yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the main thing that I run into is just uh, almost like um, lack of engagement with others and a, a lack of um, access to a community that is interested in working on these same sorts of very not electronic hardware things. Yeah. 
Um, and you've seen my TED talk, right? I haven't. I don't think oh. I've actually. Oh, you haven't? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I gotta ch check this out after. Uh, let me paste that in. Um, because that's a. Uh, it's got like two million hits, so I mean, but it's not getting out anywhere. I mean, it's. Uh, like I'm kind of disappointed with where hardware open hardware is going. It's like a, we're in a crisis the dark ages of open hardware since 2012 in 2012 about there was this great inspiration our project came out wiki house It was all this activity along yeah. open source and then the MakerBot debacle happened there yeah. And it just completely crushed everything and right now. It's it's pretty pathetic um, I'd say but it's it's just the early days um, Yeah so yeah, we're. I think we can change all of that. I, I I think that open hardware is simply inevitable. It's just not happening yet. So, but our yeah. incentive challenge for next year, like we really hope to shake the world up with. Okay, here's a clear example. We've had open collaboration. We're making real goods. Uh, the goal of that is actually to to get fifty to hundred people doing that as a sideline, like yeah. real solid drill. So yeah, just trying to invest into making it happen. At you know better, cheaper, faster in terms of product development and an actual product, which is then. It's open source, it's fixable, lifetime mm -hmm. design, like all that stuff, and made from the waste stream so that you're actually cleaning up the environment. So just radical on the, the positive properties that can be had in an enterprise. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, okay, let's go back to the Steam Camps here. So, uh, I mean, do you have the time to develop some of the curriculum or anything with us? And the idea what, what, what you're looking for. I looked through the wiki yeah. a little bit. I saw some of the projects that you're planning to, to tackle. Have you done a Steam Camp? Is this like a brand new thing? Yeah, we've done. Um, yeah, so the last Steam Camp, um, uh, here is this one. Just to show you the last one, it's, it was in the. Let's see, what did I send you? I sent you the message with. Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't even send you that. Because I just wrote a blog post about it. So oh, no. I want to. blog post okay so start let's start with the blog we'll see um so definitely take a look at that blog post but the curriculum items are these but yes we did run one and it's this is why we're we're going at it now like reception was really good and we're saying hey let's do this all over the world let's yeah. go with it so click on that last link i sent you in the chat yeah. box yeah so you see the tasks um uh, you a little bit of it is we're attaching names these are some of the positive people Chris is from 3d uh, central in Virginia um, Michelle is the guy who he's a designed initial universal access that we do Justin is he did a uh, open source uh, aquaponics stuff Sebastian are those are the guys from the open source the axiom project the open source cinema but anyway uh -huh. like this is the breakdown of all the tasks we need to develop all this and a, and the yeah. curriculum is crazy like if you look at the page one have you have you seen this graphic mm, i think i saw it on the wiki okay but universal access and universal controller we make a three-in-one machine which is a 3d printer circuit plotter and cnc mill and then we make a bunch of other things with it including mm -hmm. uh from scratch arduino from scratch 3d printed motor from scratch battery packs converted into a, a cordless welder by virtue of universal controller plus some power elements because you stack the batteries that we make like yeah. 12 of them and that's a welder like 200 huh. amps for like three okay. minutes uh, and then we go into project days but that's it's an intense thing like like to get this to the level of quality we need to develop a few things like on page two so that's just trying to break it down very explicitly right uh, so I assume you, you're familiar with 3D printers. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have one person, so that's actually got Chris. He's doing a simple extruder. Typically, we've used E3D extruders yeah. uh, for the simple machine. We're just going to do a simple one, so Chris is handling that. Then we do the pen plotter. We don't have anybody on the plotter yet. Uh -huh. uh, it's the stuff that you know we don't want to go and reinvent the wheel by trying to develop it it's more like okay let's find those people that are doing it and bring them on the team yeah that's our approach but nice. i haven't found nobody on a plotter has so far responded we're uh -huh. working on it i just put up a, a a sheet like a sign up basically a recommendation sheet there's a bunch of names like i'm going through a lot of people right now yeah. so 
Uh, this was what you see there on page two is after like 90 emails. I was wow. like, oh man, this is pathetic. But then I kind of like started go at more of the network approach. And uh, no, I, I was really surprised, like nobody's biting on it. Uh, I started first with like big name YouTubers, but none of them are, they're like, I'm too busy, sorry. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, even though like we're doing a, so the idea there is do a 50-50 revenue share uh, where you run it, you're responsible just for like getting the venue that we control uh, registrations and all that. We do the back end, but we co co all coordinate on the curriculum and then run the events in 12, 12 places around the world. Yeah. Um, for the for that yeah so i don't know how does that sound to you do you think you can develop any of this help us develop and be involved in this or gosh i i think my i think probably in the end i do not have time to commit as much as i think this would need mm -hmm. uh, at the same time that like developing the ecosystem of open source hardware is kind of like a core part of what I do and something that I want to do for that. Yeah, take a look at the last link. That's this preparation schedule. So the first mo event would be like early next year. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, 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 no, that's, but I cut you off there. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's serious stuff. It, it does require a development time. So. Yeah. Well, and there's the. It seems like, if I'm understanding correctly, I'm gonna move my uh, large feline paper Um. It seems like there's the. So there are a couple different parts here. One is the development of the, um, the project itself, right? That will be that will be made in the camp, right? Yeah. And then the other is the actual logistics and uh, other stuff around running the camp itself, right? Which is OSE we would take care of that on a back end registration, marketing, website. We do all of that. You'd be responsible only to get the venue because we can't, you know, we're not where you are. So you're most yeah. suited to do that. A venue for 12 to 24 participants uh -huh. uh, with basic space the kits and then we ship you the kits we 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 create the kits we mm -hmm. ship you the kits now the kits are important because they can also be an OSE dev kit okay because with those tools you can start hacking in a major way on our work like for example improve the printer to have Wi-Fi control now that's a uh, local meetup get the kit host local meetup so I'd like to spin off local meetups as well uh, out of this, but out of this, we get kits that we can put on a website. This is distributive enterprise. You are, this is 100% full, uh, hands down, open source. So, like, the incentive for you too is okay, we're developing products collaboratively. Um, like, for example, Chris, he's got open source headphones that he 3D printed. It's a product on, um, on Thingiverse. So, yeah, put that on an open source store that you can use. We would put that on our website. You can spin up a store. In fact, the ninth day of the camp, we want to do like an enterprise development day where we would work on codes and marketing for like uh, HTML embeds for product pages. Like, okay, uh, yeah. here's our next product, the headphones, here's shoes, um, and also 3D printers. Here's, you know, here's a refined kit of the 3D printer or the plotter or whatever, like a 3D printed motor kits. So yeah. all of that would be open, accessible products. So this is this has got to happen because, I mean, man, nobody is doing it. There's all these people. It's it's so funny. All these people talk about all these maker nets and open fab labs, this and that. You know, there's a little problem with that. They forgot that that requires open source product yeah. and blueprints. It's like it's so crazy. They everyone talks about this these maker nets, but nobody has a single design that they could use. There's some on um the only ones I really know of that work are like uh, open desk but a lot of them are also fake open source a lot of that stuff is nc so yeah. it's not really but yeah the missing thing that we're trying to address the gap in the marketplace is there are no viable open source designs for anything like mm. even with lol's bot yes it's open source but they have pretty pretty advanced production engineering it's not for diy production engineering so yeah. Yeah. We're, we're designing this for 
DIY production engineering called Amazon and UPS truck and doable so we focus like for example the frame it's steel it's not like aluminum extrusions yeah uh, stuff like that that can be bootstrapped and, and easily accessible because the GVCS actually includes the bootstrapping like we include the induction furnace so that we can take the metal like that's gonna be a big game changer we'd like to have that like in about two years where you're taking literally the scrap and you're making now you're making your own frames you're making your own steel with open source hot rolling and stuff like that mm -hmm. it's like spinning out pasta except this is molten metal yeah yeah nice right. that's awesome well i love the the way that you set this up in terms of the collaboration in um building out the curriculum as well as in executing the camps uh, let me go through, now that you've sent some of these things, let me go yeah. through this and just kind of, like, I, I need to kind of gather my thoughts here around, like, what yeah. exactly would be expected and required. Because um, it's certainly, this is definitely the kind of thing where, like, you could bite off a chunk and it's a big chunk, right? Like, there's, there's, there's a lot to be done. Yeah, uh, that's why, like, I'm really thinking, okay, at first it was like, hey, uh, if we do one camp... Then I'm doing all the development. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so let's get like six people. We can divvy that up. And now it's increasing. Like, we got to have at least 12. Now I'm actually thinking we're going to run 24 camps at the same time. I mean, the amount of curriculum that's there to be developed, it's like if you got 20 people putting in 20 hours for yeah. development of a prototype that's reasonable, that can be replicated and so forth. You know, that's like a, what, 20 times 20,000 development hours. That's like... 50 development weeks that's about right uh, especially yeah. if those people are qualified to do that like the person who's done the plotter you know they'll do the next iteration in five hours not 20 hours even you know yeah. uh, the trick here is actually the product ecology because like for example the plotter guy he'd be like oh he probably doesn't use marlin he doesn't use the universal axis but we're putting this into this redundant super robust um, generator set construction set yeah approach so so the big deal is product ecology but yeah. the idea here is just one last thing i'd like to bring up every single camp builds on the last one so if we do a, a simple drone in the first one we're gonna eventually add up add that up to an ai computer vision drone that plants my aquaponic towers down way down the road you know right, right, right. so yeah. it's about constant product evolution and a scalable fundable way to do open product development this yeah. is this is our dream yeah that's fabulous that's fabulous huh this is okay. unstoppable so I'm, I'm going all out until i catch you know catch the team so yeah um this is it yeah but yeah, yeah let me know what you think about it yeah do you have a deadline like when as soon as the team is yeah. built like right now i'm talking to everybody i'm meeting with more people tomorrow uh, we're actually going to write a pitch for the instructors because I found that, okay, we really got to give the instructors. And by doing that, we're actually reaching out to the entire open source community and I'm like collecting all the players. So that's really good and worthwhile. But we're going to write a pitch to collect the instructors, uh, make it clear, like, you know, right now I'm kind of fumbling through it, uh, posting the documents and so forth. Uh, what you see there, like the blog post is the big write up on that so far. It's got a lot of links. Take a look at that. Um, but yeah, it's going to happen when we get the instructors. I would see right yeah. now if we get, you see that uh, timeline, the preparation part shows about three month cycles. and But week zero is mm -hmm. when we have the team. We don't have the team yet. We've got like yeah. six people barely, like maybe five people that have committed to contributing curriculum. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we're, we've got a way to go. But I think it's going to start spinning up right now. I think there's energy building up right now. Oh, so that's good. Huh, nice. All right, cool. Well, this is awesome. I love what you're doing, of course. Um, let me read through it all. And then if I don't get back to you in the next few days, feel free to check in. Yeah. Uh, and, and if I'm not able to help now, this is definitely something I want to pay attention to. As yeah, you, as it develops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, I, if I'm not able to help now, I want to find a way to contribute at a later time. Yeah. Uh, so I, I can't thank you enough for, for shooting me and even though I'm getting in touch. Um, and it's just, I mean, I think this, this work is just so important, right? Yeah. It's establishing that product ecology, like you said. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's so important. So. When was the book Fab written? The what? The book called Fab. You know the book by Nershenfeld? No. Uh-uh. 
Okay, that's like a seminal, I would call it the seminal thing, which said, oh, we're going to democratize production. That was Neil Gershenfeld from the Fab Labs. Uh -huh. And uh, he wrote this book, I think it was uh, 20, 2010, I think, uh -huh. or 2001, maybe. But it's like 10 or 15 years old that this idea... Have, people have been talking about this digital fabrication promise, which has not happened. The idea that we're going to democratize production. So yeah. this is it. This is it for real. Um, that's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So let's keep in touch. I'll uh, look forward to yeah. your response and I'll continue working here. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Okay. David, thank you. Take care. Yeah.